let's paint an easy patch of flowers. Poppies, specifically. Hi everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. Representational paintings can be scary to do. So let's do something that's somewhat abstract too. Having a look at a couple of reference photos is a helpful way to get started. Poppies are a good subject because by their very loose structure, they end up looking like abstract blobs stuck on top of skinny little stems that kind of look like green spaghetti. <laughs> I mean, like hairy spaghetti. <laughs> No perfection is required to create a convincing scene. A couple of different values or shades of red blobs overlapping each other on some wavy green spaghetti. And look, a poppy. <laughs> yeah, we've got this. I'll use Kilty inks for this. Specifically red, ochre for the background, a couple of greens, and black. Since I'll be painting on synthetic paper, I can get away with thinning my inks with just isopropyl alcohol, but if you'll paint on, let's say, glazed ceramic tile or glass, when thinning your inks, definitely consider adding at least some blending solution too, so that the inks can maintain their binding or sticking power. Because when you paint on like a super slick surface like a tile and you only thin with isopropyl alcohol, you break up the ink and it doesn't stick quite as well. And it's so easy for it to rub off and sometimes before you even get a chance to seal your work and that's no fun. So adding blending solution will help greatly with that. You'll want something to hold your inks as you paint, like a palette. I'm a big fan of these little silicone cups that I discovered a while back because it's really hard to tip them over. I mean, like really hard. And I think that inks stay wet in them longer. You'll want some paint brushes. A cosmetic sponge or applicator tool might come in handy for spreading background colors. A couple of different companies make these. They are just a stamp handle with some Velcro. They're meant to hold either felt or foam pads. More often than not, they tell you the felt is for alcohol ink, the foam pads are more for more sort of uh, stamping ink. I personally like the foam pads a lot for a lot of alcohol ink painting applications. So I tend to like this. It's very much like using the cosmetic sponge, except that you've got a little handle on it. And also the fact that it's round is really useful because otherwise I end up having to trim these round because I don't want when I stamp to leave square marks. This kind of camouflages my stamping better. So these can come in handy. And finally, I'll be working on a 9 by 12 inch piece of graphics opaque white craft plastic. Now if you have Yupo instead, that's fine too. Yupo is a little more expensive and it's much more prone to staining, unfortunately. The reason I prefer graphics is because if I don't like something, <laughs> I can completely wipe it away all the way back down to the white of the paper. 95% of the time, which is a really good thing. Okay, we know what we need. Let's paint some poppies. To make my life a little easier, with a red colored pencil, I'm going to sketch in where I'd like to place my flowers. Sketching lets me take my time deciding on placement without committing ink to paper just yet. I know I want an odd number of blooms in various positions and shapes. I darken some of the lines to remind me of how I'd like my petals to overlap. To fill in the scene, I'd like some poppies in other stages of their life. A couple of unopened buds, you know, a couple 
that have started to open and a couple of seed pods left over after the petals have already fallen away. After getting all of those done and the layout of the stems, I use the red pencil again to indicate where I'd like the hint of red peeking out of those buds with the petals that are beginning to emerge. And then with the sketch done, it's time to play with the inks. <laughs> For my background, I flood the graphics paper with isopropyl alcohol. I want it really good and wet. I then add a few drops of ink and I add some ink to my foam pad and I saturate that with alcohol too. Then I go to town pouncing all over the paper. My goal here is nice even coverage that will dry with a somewhat mottled look. Toward the bottom, I add a couple of drops of forest green to the pad for a soft transition of color in the background. Now I chose this color, ochre, to both give the background an organic parchment paper look and also because this ochre color won't impact my red ink much when I paint the red over it. It might give the red a warm cast, which will be just fine for the poppies. Now I like rough, more organic edges when I paint nature type things, so I'm not taking the ink all the way to the edge of the paper. Using the foam rather than felt gives a softer, less busy or speckled look when I'm using this applicator, which is what I want for this. And having a very wet surface also prevents harsh lines from forming in the background, even if we were working on a bigger overall area. So if I'd used the felt pad instead, I wouldn't have gotten the softish look I wanted. After letting all of that dry completely, I prepare a mix of isopropyl alcohol and red ink. And on a scrap piece of graphics, I test my color to see if I like the value of the red. For this first layer, I want a lighter, less bold red. I use that thin down ink to completely fill in all of my flower heads. I purposely vary my strokes to encourage the ink to dry with that typically, you know, alcohol ink character of sort of like undulating lines and stuff. I don't want just smooth patches with no pattern to them. I really like visual texture. With the first layer down and dry, I'm now going to be a bit deliberate with my next strokes. I want to take advantage of alcohol ink's propensity for drying with a hard edge or outline. So now I'm shaping overlapping petals with the strokes of my brush. I don't care so much about how I fill in those petals. In terms of pattern, I'm happy to let the ink do whatever it wants to in terms of creating the pattern, but I just care about the overall shape of these new little blobs. <laughs> and I also care about giving them a darker look than the first layer. Some of the alcohol in the little cup has evaporated, so the ink has become more concentrated on its own but adding more ink straight from the bottle will intensify the color too if I need a little more. With all my red done, it's time for a hint at the inner parts of the poppy. <laughs> I can achieve that with a detail brush and some black ink, but since it's gonna be so tiny and only on two blooms, I'm just going to use a fine point Sharpie for those little tiny black stamens. And I'll use a micro brush dipped into uh, just a drop of ochre for the lighter center, because that little dot's only gonna peek out out of the corner of a petal, so. 
I'm not going go picking out a new color just for that. <laughs> now let's tackle our green bits. I like to work from light to dark, so I'll start with somewhat thinned forest green for this. And I'll use a tiny detail brush. To minimize the risk of loading too much ink and alcohol onto the brush, I'm mixing what I need on the scrap piece of graphics. When painting skinny things like stems, I want to keep the ink from being able to bloom. So having a very tiny amount on my brush minimizes any blooming chances. I start by coloring in the buds, both the closed and the partially opened. To hide the dark ochre spot that dried in the background earlier, I'm going to shift one of my seed pods over to cover it. I start adding some darker green ink to hint at shading on both the buds and the pods. Next, I start laying down color for my stems. My plan with this is to mix a couple of greens step by step. So I'm going to use both bottled inks and a couple of alcohol markers too, because that'll give me extra greens to work with and the markers are super easy for drawing the stems. Now, at this point, I got a kooky idea, <laughs> which I think could be cool, but I think it's going to require that I risk making the stems thicker than they should be. So, you know, like, less like spaghetti and more like, um, uh, linguine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so these are not going to be spaghetti stems, they're linguine stems now. Now, before trying out the idea, I added the caps to the seed pods with a marker. Now, also before committing to making all the stems thicker, I pull out my trusty, somewhat dull X-Acto. If you watch a lot of my videos, you've seen this before. I love using it to scratch in highlights and sort of white lines here and there. And I thought that maybe it could work really well to add like little peach fuzz hairs that poppies have all over their buds and their stems. So I try scratching on one stem and pretty quickly I decided I liked the look. Now the reason I need the stems to be a bit thicker is so that I have some color to scratch away without completely obliterating the stems altogether. So if I'd made them spaghetti skinny, then when I scratched in the lines, there'd be like nothing left. So by making them a little bit more linguine-like, I have some color left behind after doing all my scratching. The more I scratch at this piece, the more I like it. And many of you know, I secretly love this process. Okay, well, now it's not so secret because I... <laughs> well, but you know what I mean. I really enjoy the sort of meditative act of just scratching the color away where I need to. It's kind of fun. <laughs> I make little hairs going in all directions on everything that should look hairy. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what you think of this fuzzy idea and also what you think of the piece in general. To finish off the greenery, I very loosely sketch in some leaves at the bottom. After getting a feel for the size I want for the leaves, I paint them in. The leaves are there to ground the poppies so that they aren't floating in midair. To paint them, I'm just using quick flicking brush strokes. Like the blooms above, these leaves do not need to be perfect. This is a quasi pseudo representational piece 
with mostly abstract tendencies. So you can go way more abstract too and get a lovely effect. Just experiment and have fun. Do not take making flowers too seriously. They're just flowers. I hope you'll give this a try. And when you do, come show it off in my Facebook group. I would love to see what you've made. When this piece is all done, it will get a coat of Kamar varnish to seal it. Please let me know with a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Links for everything are in the description box and using them really helps my channel. Huge thanks to my patrons for all that you do. Thanks to all of you for watching and sharing this video and for being my awesome art family. Happy New Year, everyone. Let your creative nature shine. See you soon. Bye now.